We saw the same thing today in B&G Foods. You know, we've had them on Bed Bath. We've had them on, too. They've got short positions of 36% and 63%, respectively. They're going after Rocket Mortgage with a 31% short. It's crazy out there. Bed Bath Beyond stock, which opened up four at 34, then leaped to 47, squeezed up by the cheerleading small investors. And then it plummeted to $30.68 to finish up just 47 cents. The squeeze didn't stick. My advice to the shorts, I'm not going to make, give any advice to the Wall Street Reddit crowd. They're making a lot of money. But my advice to the shorts, stop crowding into the same trades, leaving yourself open to this kind of action. You'll never know who Wall Street bets will target next. Now, not all of the, these targeted buying campaigns are about uh, busting the shorts. Some of the stocks they aim for are genuinely loved and they think are very undervalued. Here I'm thinking BlackBerry. It's got a good software business. Palantir, both of which had gargantuan runs today. They are so loved, and the Wall Street Bets crowd doesn't seem to want to stop buying at these levels. They always look at, use these targets like the analysts who are too enthusiastic. But as entertaining as these moves are, this stuff is ultimately a sideshow. At the end of the day, I don't think a Reddit forum can bring the house down. They're picking undervalued stocks, bet a big short position, and run with them. And that can cause crazy moves in a handful of stocks, but it's not big enough to move the entire market. Come on! What really matters now is that we have a stock pickers market for the first time in 20-odd years. This is a market that rewards individual companies for being well-run. And that means stocks are less sensitive to the broader economy than they used to be. Now, we know many of the biggest winners thrive in a shutdown because they enable the stay-at-home economy. Remember that? Stay-at-home economy, we've got, we've got just you know, indices galore to show this stuff. I think most of tech has gotten overheated at these levels. The endless price target boost for the semiconductor and Apple are very unnerving to me. They set a high bar. That can hurt the market. There's a whole gauntlet of stocks that are from, roared from Microsoft to Tesla to Boeing to AMD, and they they could really hurt us if they get hit with a big bout of profit taking all at once. But of these, only Apple's at its highs right now. Meanwhile, when a company reports a decent quarter, as Kimberly Clark did today, the stock soars. Hey, do you know that Clorox followed up in sympathy at one point? It's up 22 points. Of course, stocks go down just as much when they disappoint, and that's what happened to IBM last week. It's a market of stocks, people. So the bottom line, with the exception of a handful of gigantic tech plays, there isn't a stock out there that's big enough to bring down this market. If anything, the gauntlet of earnings this week started with J&J tomorrow which is not at all sense of the economy, could be a terrific sign that many big cap stocks are immune to a slowdown and unperturbed by the crazy action in marginal names like a GameStop or B&G Food or even a rocket motion, Bed Bath & Beyond. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.